Welcome to the Stone Builders Hour with Pastor Gary and Elder JC. Hello, Tallahassee. We are about to have a great discussion during this program. Well, praise God. You know, so many times, especially during a major crisis that we have right now about the virus that's affecting our whole economy. Yes. It's affecting people in their household. Yes. It's affecting your paychecks. Yes. We begin to question, what is this all about? How are we going to survive? Is this really happening to me? I haven't missed a day of work in, in years, and now all of a sudden I'm cut back because they say I can't go to work no more. What's happening right now? Oh, yes, uh, it's a major kind of throwback. Um, but many of us do struggle. And when we struggle with these questions that you just asked, Pastor, mm. we begin to say, uh, is there really a God? Yeah. Does he really exist? Mm. Uh, many of us still feel that we are in absolute control, but in a situation like this, we have oh, no. no control. <laughs> Government is controlling it right now, uh, our, both on our local, our county, our state, and national level. I mean, it's crazy. Yes. <laughs> um, I just believe today's discussion will clear up how we feel about a, gra a force greater than ourselves, because yes. I do believe that God is operating. Believe it thou this. Remember oh, that? That was from the resurrection. resurrection program. Yep. So it sounds familiar because we're provoking those memories, but we'll also want to be able to move forward on a great discussion today. Please go. Um, one of the interesting things I read this uh, book, it was a small book, about 124 pages. I read it almost overnight. Mm. Your God is Too Small by J.B. Phillips, and mm. it was written about 2006. The premise is that many of us say we believe God or mm. in God, including myself, but he sometimes eludes us. And some of us may say, does he exist at all? Yeah. And of course, during, during this time, we're really asking new questions, <laughs> Lord, why me? This discussion provides answers to questions as to does God exist? Who is he? Mm. Why, if there is a God, does our world have such troubles today? And oh. I mean the entire world. Oh, yes. As a believer, I have many questions too. But I do believe my uh, system uh, for my belief in God stands strong in knowing I have a loving Father, as Jesus has told us so many times. Thank you, Yeshua. Yes. How do I know? but through the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. In Luke 11, 1 through 13, all of you out there in Radio Land should know that is the Lord's Prayer. And how does it start? Our, Our Father, Father, which art, art in, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I mean, mm. I am calling on <laughs> Abba Father. I need you to be in my presence. Praise God. Now, uh, now uh, you can listen to our past shows and also you can come in on this show on iTunes, Google Music, TuneIn, SoundCloud, Spotify, or you can go on Wave 94 and mm -hmm. listen to us live. Sure, yeah. uh, it's not too late. You can listen to us live on 94.1 and, um, and, uh, and join in uh, today because we're going to commemorate uh, Troy Sneed. He's a songwriter and an artist from Jacksonville, and he attended and played football at FAMU. Mm -hmm. He just recently passed away after contacting the COVID-19 or the China virus or the, or the, the he got that virus. <laughs> Coronavirus. It's you know, like that sugar, you know, he get that sugar. And he's only 52 years old. Yes. But we're going to play his songs uh, throughout the show. Uh, as a tribute because he has some awesome songs and he also wrote for a number of other people and also look and see how you may become a supporter of the Stone Builders Hours and you can do it through a cash app uh, a dollar sign uh, L Stones 51 or visit our website we living stones dot uh, org so stay tuned uh, listen to our sponsors and we'll be right back
My name is Anne-Marie Baker and I used to have severe excruciating right arm and neck pain thanks to spinal decompression therapy from Dynamic Spine and Wellness Center. I no longer have any pain or discomfort and my issues were resolved without having any surgery. Dynamic Spine and Wellness Center has helped me enjoy my life again. At Dynamic Spine and Wellness Center, we unlock your potential to be the best version of you and build your body to excellent health. Hi, my name is Dr. Powell, and we take pride in giving you fast and friendly service that is tailored to your needs. We provide safe, comfortable, and effective treatments using state-of-the-art equipment. Life is full of adjustments, so get yourself realigned for better, healthier future today. Call 402-9061. That's 402-9061. Dynamic Spine and Wellness Center. Online at dynamicspineandwellness.com. Guess who? It's me, Elder JC, asking your support for Livingstone's Parenting Engagement Services. What is it? It will help parents be more active in their children's lives. Other ways to support? Donate online at WeLivingStones.org or call us at 850-219-0091. Remember, your donation is tax deductible. Man, what did you get on that math test? Dude, I failed it. I got an F. Bro, it was kind of hard, but I got to be on it. I thought I knew the answers, but I missed some days from school. Why are you sick? Nah, I just didn't feel like coming. Look, man, every day you miss school, you fall further behind in your classes. You miss information that help you pass quizzes and tests. It's important that you come to school. Don't become a statistic. When you skip school, you miss out on your potential. For more information, contact the Leon County Schools Office of Prevention, Intervention, Equity, and Services at 487-7306. Welcome back to the Stone Builders Hour with Pastor Gary and Elder JC. Praise God. Yes. What a topic today. Do you believe God exists? Radio Land, Radio Family. I know I believe in God. Yes. We as believers have a childlike image of God. I know I did when I was growing up. He got the whole world <laughs> in his hand. I always thought him like, uh, what is that guy who owned the globe? He had the right. globe on his shoulders Shoulder, and everything. Yep. So uh, Atlas, yep. uh, it was like the globe, uh, the Atlas. He was a strong man. He always had the globe on his back of his uh, shoulder. So I always thought like God was something like that, holding up the whole world uh, with his hands because he was invisible. He was awesome. He had he was visible, but yet invisible. We see his creation, mm-hmm. but we don't see him. Man, what a mighty God that is. So as men and women of God, our image sometimes does not make room for a God in the modern times we now live in. We tend to place him in a box. And it's always a small box. You said that earlier. <laughs> yeah. You got a little small box. You know, There's two signs we have is that either we believe in evolution theory, yes. which was promoted by Charles Darwin, or the God of the Bible. Now, in my opinion, this is our opinion, evolution is a kind of faith not based on proof. No matter how long the earth has existed, animals and humans have not evolved into or from other animals, such as Darwin says humans evolved from monkeys, mm-hmm. yet we still have monkeys. <laughs> you know, so why that monkey, how come all the monkeys didn't, Evolved into humans. humans. And then how come those monkeys were so special that they did? <laughs> so, uh, so, so also we believe because our parents believe in what we learned in our home. Most of our spiritual foundation yes. comes out of the home. Used or, to. Used to, yeah, because, oh God, oh, that's a whole new mm-hmm. topic right there. Or we want to fit in. So we'll take somebody else's belief. Now, I was exposed to the God of the Bible, but now all of a sudden, I'm looking at a Hindu, I'm looking at Buddha, I'm looking at over here, I'm I'm looking at all, it's like the grass is greener on the other side, so we're always trying to find God in things and people, Uh, but, or we just want to be accepted, 
So you're going to accept what other people are, are saying. That's why people get caught up in them cults. Yeah. Well, you know, that's we got true. got Jim Jones that's drinking true. that Kool-Aid because they say, they chasing it's after God. Funny, they they're chasing after man mm-hmm. and not after God. But somehow man put himself up that he is God and has a personal relationship. So for, in order for us to get to him, I got to go through you. Uh-oh. Or what are we willing to accept for ourselves? Right. Well, you're right. Um, one of the things that we tend to do is we tend to follow the crowd. And sometimes when you're following the crowd, you want to be able to fit in. And if you're not fitting in, because I can remember growing up in Hazelwood in, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, there were those gr- the people that I knew, I grew up as a Catholic. So I went to mass. We were only in church an hour, but I knew those young ladies who were uh, in church all day long. They wore the long dresses. Mm -hmm. Uh, They couldn't wear makeup. They couldn't. They had to have a certain lifestyle. And as a result of that, I I wondered, I says, why are they like that? And I'm like this. And then later on, uh, we actually had um, Muslims, uh, people of Islam who had moved into our community. So that was a different faith. So my proof, as I look at it, is we need to look to the scriptures, the Holy Bible. Yes, that's the foundation. It is. And although some of our scientists and biologists and geologists believe in evolution, many do not. And how is it that we have not seen any actual proof of evolution and we're still promoting it? Mm. That's a little bit disturbing. But those scientists who look to creation see that there is space for God, not seen by evolution in inanimate Objects. Yes. Darwin was not correct. Today, many of us do not believe due to God appears to be what we could say old fashioned. He's not up with the times. He's not hip. (laughs) I I know the children say something else today, but that's Mm -hmm. our term. It's not that individuals are godless, but God doesn't fit into our world. You know, they just believe he's not. How can he be gone and be and I can be able to do the things I'm doing? It's not like everyone's out there wicked. We're not saying that. But God just doesn't fit into their defined box. And there are two things we need to deal with. And that is one, seeing a glimpse of the true God. Because yes. you're right. Your God is too small. Yeah. Uh, if you think about God and think about the creation, I can just go outside and look up at the sky. Mm. and see the blues and the clouds and then it might sprinkle a little bit then you get the rainbow uh, man is responsible for that yeah. I think not and then you look Just at by accident right right well, no, the big bang, <laughs> big, bang like big bang I don't think about that either and then you think about when you go out and we do our garden or we're in our yard and you see the grasses and the flowers and the different colors That is so prominent that there is a greater force than us. And the second thing is finding the real God for ourselves. Yes. John 14, 1 says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And that was Jesus speaking, Yeshua. So we know that if he exists, that there's some meaning in what we do and how we do it. Remember that play? Uh, it's, it's an old play. Yes. Uh, your arms, arms are too short to box with God. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. When you play. said that, uh, that the uh, how massive the universe is, and and he said, and he he chastised Job. Yep. Where are you? Yep. When I when created I this, mm-hmm. that, and this, you know, and and it, it was it is so amazing and awesome to be part of uh, this glory. That he placed us human humans on this earth. Praise God. So it's in our conscience that moves us to believe or not believe in God. Uh oh. Mm. Subconscious yeah, consciousness. So. It could be easily perverted in a sensitive person. That's why they could be easily misled. Mm-hmm. Or just as easily ignored in an insensitive person. Correct. Our upbringing is the first example of how our conscious is developed. If our parents raised us as meat eaters, as for an example, 
then someone trying to influence influence us to be vegetarian, that's going to be foreign. <laughs> I know JC been trying to convert the kids and I uh, and the vegetarians for like years upon years upon years, and they're carnivores. So I had help around me with, no, nah, no, we got to have some meat, at least. <laughs> but now they're gone. It's just me. I'm losing my, I'm losing my power. <laughs> Where my but, kids at? <laughs> but, boys, but based on COVID-19, you need to be eating more plant-based. Yeah, build up that immune system <laughs> because we would be doubtful to change. And the second example is our moral sense. If there is a taboo among us, say, uh, like guns are wrong to have, then it becomes a forbidden things we feel guilty about no matter how it can be proven otherwise to oneself. The third way is through propaganda. And the greatest example is what happened in Nazi Germany against the Jews. Uh, when Hitler said all the Jews were bad and they were killed and not only Jews but they was killing a whole bunch of folks they killed, they killed Africans, gypsies, Italian, gypsies a great number of them yes. were blacks I didn't know that yes we got so history. they were not of the superior race so anyone who was not basically mm. blonde hair blue eyes yes were not fitting into that category wow they was the master race yes so you know that wasn't God so without God, our moral judgments can be influenced by upbringing, training, and propaganda. Mm, boy, say that again. Upbringing, training, and propaganda. So parents, now that we're all shut in yes. during this virus that's going around, your home is your temple. And just as you're looking at playing the games and videos, break out the Bible and read some of those stories in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have a lot of stuff going on in the Bibles. I mean, you got action, you Correct. got you got the war, you got you got people like Samson, you got people like Joshua. You got a whole bunch of stuff that's more exciting in the Word, and you can bring that word to life uh, through the storytelling. That's much better. What's going on? On TV right now. That's right. And a lot of it, that's, and I believe that's why a lot of us are afraid to deal with it because of our parents and our upbringing. And parents, if you are not getting your children into the word, how do you expect them to hold off mm. from dealing with their peers? And when peer pressure comes, I mean, look what's happened recently. In the last couple of weeks, we've had at least two sets of maybe three or four teenagers yes. arrested for such things as breaking into a gun facility, wow. um, another involved with, I believe, murder. So what is it? One of the things we can do, parents, is be an example by getting that word in us. And this same fear shadows how we see God. So just yes. as our parents and our upbringing makes us afraid, so it does when we look at God. So with guilt and shame, we fear punishment from God as with our own parents. Yeah. Uh, we may grow frustrated and wonder if God is big enough. Those of us in loving households, though, possess a better picture of God as loving and understanding. Yes, so there's like two things, mm -hmm. dichotomies going on. One is I had a bad father, mm -hmm. a risky father, or I didn't have a father. Yeah. And the other is my father was in the home. We had a loving father. Everything was hunky-dory. So your picture of how God is, is much different. This is the type of relationship that Christ wants us to have of his father, because mm -hmm. that is really the first thing he says, his father. He always applies God as his, his father. father. Mm -hmm. We know our God is big enough, and it's not influenced by what I call a parental hangover as seen by J.B. Phillips. Your God is too small. Mm -hmm. Because when I think about how I grew up, I grew up as in a Catholic church, and I believed, and I still believe, in a lot of the tenets, but it was that belief that got me through some of the more difficult situations of, of growing up. Uh, you don't think about it, but I just knew that my God was bigger yes. than any God that I knew, and I knew he would always have my back. 
So just remember that your God is not small. He is big. Yeah. Uh, don't forget, Tallahassee audience and Radio Land uh, to join us as Stone Builder supporter. You can call us at 850-219-0091 or our cash app, dollar sign, Lstones51. Praise God. Hey, we're going to take a commercial break. Because my God is an awesome God. Yes, he, he is. He reigns from heaven above. Yes, he does. We'll be right back. You should be feeling better by now. But just in case you just got into your car, let us say it again. All of your problems. All of your pain. Lay it down. Lay it down. Lay it down. If someone loves you, they don't hit you. Hi, this is Dewey Rio with Noble, the National Organization of Black Law Enforcement Executives. Dating or relational violence is an act or threat of violence by one member of a couple against the other person in a relationship. It's also when one partner tries to maintain power and control over the other through abuse or violence. The abuse can include isolating you from others, threatening you, your family, or even themselves if you don't do what they want, physical violence, or sexual acts. This is not about love. It's about control. It's not about anything you did wrong. It's about control. If you're in a relationship like this, you're not alone. There is help. Contact Refuge House, your school guidance counselor, or law enforcement. Just remember, there is help. This message is presented by this radio station and the North Florida chapter of Noble. For more information, visit noblenorthflorida.com, and together we can promote justice by action. Guess who? It's me, Elder JC, asking your support for Livingstone's Parenting Engagement Services. What is it? It will help parents be more active in their children's lives. Other ways to support? Donate online at WeLivingStones.org or call us at 850-219-0091. Remember, your donation is tax deductible. Man, do I love card night. You ready, boys? You got a king? Go fish that! Oh, come on! <laughs> this is WWE superstar Titus O'Neil. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Learn more at 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Thank you for staying tuned to the Stone Builders Hour with Pastor Gary and Elder JC. That's and, me. And we're talking about God, mm-hmm. the Almighty God. Yes. Jehovah. Uh, you know, El, uh, the, 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 the Jehovah Rapha, uh, you know, Yahweh. Yes. He got a whole bunch of names. The God we serve is our father, but he has many names, just like I called out. Mm-hmm. But the one name besides father yes. is our high priest. Oh, wow. Because he existed from eternity. Mm-hmm. And I know in Hebrews 7, 3, I know they're talking about Melchizedek and uh, in Abraham, but he says that without father, without mother, mm-hmm. without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abide the priest continually. They're talking about Yeshua, Jesus. Mm -hmm. He was then like the Son of God, but he was not yet the Son of God. He was also God along with God. Something that could be confusing. (laughs) I am, but I am, but I think that I am. Yes, but you're, um, you were, Born a, a boy. Yes, praise God. Your brother. Yes, I am. Your son. Uh oh. Your father. Oh man. You're an uncle. Uh oh. So how are, and your husband? So how are you all those things? But you just won. Uh oh. So God. God is to me <laughs> is of that same essence. Ooh. He was the father. He had to come down in flesh to. Make what's the word repudiation for our sins in the flesh 
to connect us back to himself. Wow. But he did it through being born again wow. in flesh, hmm. died and resurrected. And he was all those things. He was a brother. He was a son. Yes. He wasn't a father because he was he, only he one. Run. Yes. And he had neither mother or father. So I just believe that when we talk about God, it's not so much a trinity, but God is. He says, I am that, that I, I am. am. He's like El Shaddai. Yes. The all sufficient one, mm -hmm. the God of the mountains, the God almighty. He's God is the all sufficient source of all our blessings. God is all powerful. Our problems are not too big for God to handle. Yes. Praise God. <laughs> and I believe that you mentioned some of his names. Uh, the Hebrew word L, E L, is from a meaning to be to be strong. Hmm. So you have Eloa and the plural Elohim. And the, the singular is used in poetry, but we all know the plural form is commonly seen throughout the Bible. The Hebrew word, another Hebrew word, Jehovah. And remember, when God had his original name, we didn't have, we, we say Yahweh, but there was no A and there was no E because there were no vowels in the Hebrew language. I mean, you say Elohim. Yes. Elohim is also the all-powerful one creator. And God is the all-powerful creator of the universe. God knows all, creates all, and is everywhere at all times. Because you just said the pure plural of El. Yes. And when you said that Jehovah, yes. that is like, I am the one who is the self-existent one. God never changes. His promises never fall, fail. When we are faithless, he is faithful. faithful. Yes, he is. We need to obey him. Praise yeah. God. Well, some of the other names, when we look at Psalms 23, uh, we know that is the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. But that is a reference also to Yahweh. You had Yahweh Roy, God our shepherd. You had Yahweh Jireh, God our provider. And, and we use for Yahweh, we can also say Jehovah because yes. we learned it as Jehovah, Jehovah. Jireh. Yeah. Jehovah Shalom, God our peace. Jehovah Nisi, God is our banner. Jehovah Rafika, God is our healer. Jehovah Zitkanu, God is our righteousness. Jehovah Shema, God is present. And Jehovah Mekedadishkim, God who <laughs> sanctifies. So I just want you to know that God has many names. Yes, he but does. in Exodus 15 11, it says, Who is like unto thee, O mm. Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? The Old Testament is the record of a rich and varied life extending over more than a thousand years, inspiring largely inferred, God was inferred from the deeds. You knew him by his actions yes. and institutions, speaking indirectly of his providence, but you knew him because uh, he spoke to Abraham yes, right. in the burning bush, or Moses in the burning bush. Abraham, when he was getting ready to kill his son, and he said there was a ram in the bush. So he was there. We just didn't know him as such as that name, except Yahweh. But it is the, in the manifestation of man looking outward to God. Hmm. His presence is seen as the face or countenance of God. His voice speaking to man and his glory like, like the burning, burning bush. bush. Yeah. Genesis 3230 says, And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, wow. and my life is preserved. And that was a time mm. when he wrestled with God, and yeah. God took his hip and put it out of the way. <laughs> so you know, God can do things just in uh, a little wrestling. Ooh. You know that he is ever present and ever Praise there. God. Isaiah 40, 10, it says, Behold, mm. the Lord God will come with strong hand, mm. and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, 
His reward is with him and his work before him. Mm -hmm. Revelations 11, 6. These have power to shut heaven, mm -hmm. that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over water to turn them into blood and to smite the earth with all plagues, uh-oh, as often as they will. He has the power to create plagues. Mm. And we're, what are we going through right now? A plague. We see God as a rewarder, as a two witnesses. Now, everybody know about them two witnesses mm -hmm. that appeared. Uh, they're referenced in both the Old and the New Testament. His power is foretold of his power and might. We also distinguish God with attributes like the highest. Mm. Elohim in Genesis or Yahweh in Psalm 717. I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness and will sing praise to his name of the Lord Most High. He is the God Almighty, yes. El Shaddai. Or he may be the God of Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob. Or you know what? He's the God of Gary and JC. All right. Praise All God. Right. And I love when you said, I will praise Elohim according to his righteousness. And we'll sing praise in the name of Elohim Mosai. Exodus 3, mm. 6 says, Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, mm. for he was afraid to look upon God. And Ooh. remember, God said, hide your face, face until my backside comes around. <laughs> and once he was exposed to the backside, remember, he went down from the mountain with mm. the ten tablets. And people were so afraid yes. because of the light the glory. that shone off his face. So, you know, if all I get is a little backside and I have that kind of appearance mm. to the people, how much greater is my God? Mm -hmm. Woo. So, as the ten tribe, but... Uh, one of the things that we had to do at the beginning, a man had to overcome his belief by staying true to the one true God. They had to be segregated. Yeah. They weren't with the other tribes. God said he was a jealous God. He wanted them to have all of their allegiance. The Hebrews were his special yes, people. Yes, they were. Matter of fact, the whole, when you open up your Bible, it says it's all his the, message is for the Hebrews. Yes. And all that time, as they stayed in their tents or it stayed with themselves they were true to God but as the ten tribes moved so did their association with other gods thus mm. producing coordination assimilation and disintegration of their God with other gods isn't that what mm. happened to Solomon even as rich and as yes. wealthy as he was he was marrying the other women of the other tribes and yeah, they changed yeah. his heart away from the one true God. Yeah, to me. To right yeah, well, that's <laughs> <too. laughs> Couldn't even get around to all of them. <laughs> yeah, more than what the calendar of the year was. Yeah, you're right. No, and that, that, and then it was wives, then it was concubines. So that was yes. truly another story. When you have time to do anything. <laughs> of course, God did change, did not change. The people change, yeah. leading to changes in their character, wickedness, and war. And you know, mm. when we turn away from God, even in this United States, look at what's been happening. When yes. we grew up, we and that's really dating ourselves. We used to listen to the Art Link Letter Show, yeah. and he would always have kids on who would say the darnest things, but they talked about God. Yes. They had prayer. They had Pledge of Allegiance and the flag. And that's how we grew up. And now all of a sudden we have moved so far away. I don't know if it's left or right, but we have moved so far away from what we did then mm -hmm. that we look at the world we exist. Children mm -hmm. are different. Yeah. Uh, people are having issues, not only just of uh, uh, spiritual issues, but we're having health issues. And now, didn't it say, I'm going to have to go back and look that up, mm -hmm. that it says the earth is even groaning. Yeah. So that to the point where now we are having disease inflict on us, mm -hmm. locusts 
ravaging Africa. I don't know how much more they can be ravaging, but they must be really hungry. They're ravaging. Uh, and then we having uh, floods and earthquakes, earthquakes and just things Storm, all over. Tornadoes. So if we're not believing in God, God, all he has to do, snap his finger or move away from us. And I do not want to be here with God moving further away from us. And times have changed because we grew up with prayer in school. Ooh, yep. You said the Pledge of Allegiance every day. Mm -hmm. You said Bible verses during school every mm -hmm. day. We all took turns. Yep. It wasn't even an issue. Even the bad kids. We all, <laughs> we said the Pledge of Allegiance. Even the bad kids where we said prayer. And that's how we grew. I think it was when our daughter well, it's like they, they took prayer out of school. Yeah, by the yeah, time I see the, the result yeah. of the prayer, prayer being, being removed, eliminated, yeah. and now you have a generation of folks who don't believe in God, won't even uh, pick up the Bible, or he's such an invisible, or why is he so harsh, or if something happens that why, why God would God allow God this to yeah. happen? But we're going to talk attention. about that in the mm -hmm. next section about what is wrong with our world, and we'll be right back. Every time I open my eyes, I'm just standing for you. Every time I jump in my ride, I'm just standing for you. Sometimes I fail the test, but Lord, I'm still standing for you. But Lord, you know I'm doing my best. I'm just standing for you. Tune in to the Stone Builders Hour, a unique talk show hosted by Pastor Gary and Elder JC every Thursday at 5 o'clock on Wave 94.1. Carter's Corner provides expert athletic consulting to agencies, sports programs, and families. Services include fundraising, community events, football camps, career planning, and vending. Carter's Corner offers quality coaching to athletes and highlights their actions on the field and classrooms to college recruiters. Call Sam Carter, 850-510-6702, or email carterscorner at me.com. Carter's Corner is also a 501. One C three nonprofit. Hey, it's me, your cell phone. We need to talk about something, something serious. I know you love me. I know you like using me wherever you are, but I feel like this isn't working out when you're driving. I know you may think that it's possible to focus both on me and the road, but I just don't feel the same way. I think we should spend time away from each other when you're driving. It's for the best. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, a message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. Welcome back with Pastor Gary and Elder J.C. on the Stone Builders Hour. Mm. Uh, remember, you may be able to reach us at any time, 850-219-0091, if you have further discussions or questions about this or any other topics. And remember, listen out to all our other programs. Yes. We are grateful to bring a word which makes us look at our belief in God. And yes. surely we have been, Pastor and I have been married how many years? 40, 47. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we have been through some stuff and we know God is in our midst. We as believers decide to believe and try to make sense of what is wrong with our world. You know, just as this whole COVID-19 is going <laughs> on, we're, we're all saying, well, why can't we go outside? I, I don't see anything. I don't feel anything. And I know in our own life, it didn't become personal until a few of our relatives had yes. come down with it. So a niece, and then we just found out a nephew, nephew. Um, uh, also uh, in-laws. In yes. So when you see that, you begin to question, well, God, what are you doing? Yeah. So we as believers decide to believe, and many believe that the world is okay, just as it is. Or we have not done our job as believers to make this world a better world. But do remember, Jesus only started with 12 disciples. That's it. it not, what do we always say? Don't uh, fret small beginnings because that's how it starts. It starts small. 
Look what they accomplish. It is now our turn to take what they develop to a new level, trusting we can prove to the world that God indeed exists and we need him. And one of the things that we find that the of the Ten Commandments, five commandments bear directly on it. The first, the second, the third, the fourth, and the tenth. The first being, you shall have no other gods before me. The mm-hmm. second, you shall make no idols. And that means no false impressions of God. Mm-hmm. The third, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Mm-hmm. So when you be hollering it out, JC, that's my initials, but you're not calling on me. <laughs> you're taking the Lord God's name in vain. Praise God. Keep the Sabbath, Sabbath day. day holy. Mm. That's a big question mark. I think we all need to go back and really yes. look at that Sabbath day. We might have to do just a show on the yeah, Sabbath. Sabbath. Yeah. And then the last one, you shall not covet um, either your neighbor or anybody else's work. But I think some of us recall that the first commandment deals with what we term worship. Our worship is to be directed towards the unique creator the source of all things and towards him only. The second deals with the way we worship in spirit and in truth. And we always say that we come to the Lord in spirit and in in truth. No one has ever seen the creator. Yes, right. We can feel him like the wind. We can hear his voice. We can also have intuition, but we just haven't physically seen him. And it's also known that if we did see him directly, Mm. we would just die. Yes. So we have to use our human imagination to figure out what he looks like, who he is. The third involves the sincere truthfulness, purity, and quality of our worship. It deals with glorifying God. However, knowing the importance of his purpose to our lives Should we not strive to be more like him? God does not want us concerned about what he looks like. Mm. For that puts the emphasis in the wrong area. And I know we always say, yes, um, you know. We're not talking about Jesus. He came from, right. (laughs) We're talking about. came from this area. Right. (laughs) He gives us enough information Mm. for us to know that he looks like a man. And that is enough. Because didn't he say in the beginning, we'll make him in our image. However, he greatly desires that we know what he is. The entire Bible reveals his mind, character, Mm -hmm. attributes, offices, power, will, promises, plan, and relationship to us. And if Mm -hmm. anyone really wants to get to know the Lord, read Psalms. Because David did such a great job really showcasing the love that he had for the Lord. So all of these is just to give us an idea of how we can make our world better, not what is wrong with the world. Mm. You know, God, Jehovah, yes. Yahweh, yes. Elohim, uh, the Almighty is the father of all of us. He knows and loves each of his children with mm. a pure fatherly love. Because he lives in heaven, we often call the Almighty our Heavenly Father. Yes. In his eyes, we are all equal, and we're all worthy of love and happiness. Jehovah knows and understands each of us individually. Praise God. He knows our strengths. He knows our weaknesses, our hopes. He knows our fears. Yes, he does. Our Heavenly Father, he's patient compassionate and understanding no matter who we are or what we've done he wants us to reach out to him so that he can help us along the way as he help us grow we will begin to understand and experience his real joy yes matthew 7 11 he said if ye know how to give good gifts unto your children mm. how much more shall your father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him all we gotta do is just ask god knows each and every one of us 
and he wants us to know him too. Yeshua, Jesus says, and this is the life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, who hath sent, who he has sent. That's in John 17, 3. Jesus taught that God, our Heavenly Father, is there for us when we reach out to him. All we got to do is, he said, all you got to do is knock, ask, mm -hmm. and seek. As we build a relationship with the Almighty, we can begin to use his power to help us with challenges in our life, especially now with this virus going on. Yeah. We can start the journey of knowing Elohim, Jehovah, Yahweh, by praying to him and also studying his word. Well, you're talking about God being sovereign over our lives. Yes. It does not appear in the Bible as such, but it says sovereignty is the state or quality of being sovereign, the status, dominion, rule, or power of a sovereign, supreme and independent political authority. We can apply this to God. Yes, we can. So one of the things we need to keep thinking about is many seem to think of God as nothing more than a great man, an angry judge, uh -oh. a soft and kindly grandfather, or a scientist who invented the universe, wound it up, <laughs> walked away from it, <laughs> unconcerned as it operated on its own. Hmm, mm. I'm wondering. But the Bible presents sin. I don't believe that because he is out of time, time yeah. and time. But he made time for us. That's right. Because so we needed he, to be in the spatial relationship because I know how it is when I don't have enough time to do something, I start getting anxiety and anxious because it's like, well, there's not yeah. enough time. There's not enough time. So just imagine he has no time. Mm. And that's why a lot of times people say, well, how can God hear us here in the United States or right here in Tallahassee, right here in my home, and he can hear people across the world because he's timeless. He's mm -hmm. everywhere and, and at all places. But one of the things that we want, we need to believe is God is supreme. Yes. Governing yes. all his creation in righteousness. Pastor, why don't you read that? Um, it says, some angels and all of mankind have failed to submit to him, but read Mark 7, 9 in 2023, which says, All too well. You reject the commandment of God that you may keep your traditions. Mm. What comes out of a man that defiles a man? For from within, out of the heart of men, proceeds evil thoughts, mm. adultery, fornications, murders, theft, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, an evil eye. Blasphemy, pride, foolishness, all these evil things come from within and defile a man. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting when people uh, talk about Yeshua, we talk about this God being sovereign. Well, if Yeshua is God and he's sovereign, what are the terms that always describe him? Meek and mild. He mm. produces that kind of tradition. But this word mild is, I think, deliberate use to describe a man. Think about all the things he did. He didn't hesitate to challenge and expose the, hypo the hypocrisy mm. of the religious people. He stood up to that. Mm. In fact, they was always out to what? Kill him. Yes. But he could disappear <laughs> within the cloud. And when he did show up, he did show up with a cat of nine tails right. sometimes. <laughs> in the temple and uh, he was a fighter right I mean he kicked butt kicked people out that means he had to push his shove yes Toss, turn well, over remember tables. now he was a carpenter so that means he had to be he had a six pack yeah. too he had some muscles because they didn't have no power tools that's that right no, none of those you <laughs> plug in but he was also a man that had such personality that he mm. walked unscathed through a murderous crowd yeah. A man so far from being a non-entity that he was regarded by the authority uh, by the authorities what as a public danger, a man who could be moved to violent anger by shameless exploitation or by smug complacent or orthodoxy, a man of such courage that he deliberately walked to to what he knew would mean his death. 
Mm. despite the earnest pleas of well-meaning friends. And you know, if that was any one of us, we would have all been out of there. Mm. We wouldn't even try that. So mild might not be the exact word to describe him. So um, I think Matthew 13, 14 says it all. And in the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, hearing you will hear and shall not understand. And seeing you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of this people have grown dull. Their eyes are hard of hearing and their eyes they have closed. Lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears. Lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I should heal them. Now, these two passages, they lay the blame for sin. Mm. It goes all the way back to Adam yes, taking that bite because he had everlasting, the everlasting. He was timeless. He came in time grown man. He didn't have to go through no birth canal. He was there and his wife came through him also. And so they were timeless. Praise God. But you know what? <laughs> Failure to submit to God on man. The devil has indeed mm -hmm. deceived the whole world. Yes, he has. And he can't do anything without God's permission. That's right. That, that's the other clip. But God holds each responsible. He's going to hold us each responsible. Satan for his part and each person for his part. But I was going to say, but remember, Satan, we, we talk about why is there chaos in the world. Remember, when God created the world, there was no chaos. That's right. But when Satan, Lucifer at the time, the uh, praise, the worship praise leader mm. decided he was that he was just as good as God. He took a third of the angels with him. And that's what has created all this chaos. Mm -mm, got the big head. Mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm. Second Timothy's uh, three, one and 13 provides a concise but penetrating description of the kind of world we live in. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come, mm. but evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, mm. deceiving and being deceived. Wow. Despite 2,000 years of preaching, still see the overwhelming majority falling a broad way that leads to the destruction. That's what math, uh, Matthew 7, 13 uh, talked about. You know, not the narrow path, right. but wide is the gate. Gate, right. And narrow is the way. It's a struggle going through that narrow way. And that's where God is. So I think he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. That's Hebrews 11, 6, another one of my more favorite uh, scriptures. And then the other is, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. So from these two foundational elements, we derive a convicting sense of God's sovereignty over his creation and we can then develop human responsibility. Now that we have talked about all of this interesting information about God, I wanted to give a few stats on what is happening here in the United States because we, yeah. at one time when we grew up, churches were packed, uh, mm -hmm. We went to services. We all believed. Um, I, like I said, I grew up as a Catholic. You grew yeah, up as a Pentecostal. The Triumphant Church of Kingdom and God. And I grew up. Three, in, four, three to four days a week. Yep. Yeah, I grew up with growing up in Catholic Church every Sunday and usually confirmation and communion, special events. But the religious landscape of the United States continues to change rapidly. In Pew Research Center uh, that did telephone surveys between 2018 and 2019, it stated 65% of American adults describe themselves as Christians when asked about their religion, down 12 percentage points over the past decade. Mm. That's huge. Meanwhile, the religiously unaffiliated share of the population consisting of people who describe their religious identity as atheist, agnostic, 
or nothing in particular, now stands at 26% up from 17% in 2009. Hmm. Both hmm. Protestants and Catholics are experiencing losses of population share. Currently, 43% of U.S. adults identify with Protestantism, down from 51% in 2009. Catholics are one in five, down from 20, which is 20%, was formerly 23% in 2009. Meanwhile, all subsets of the religiously unaffiliated population, a group also known as red religious nuns, that means they check they have no religion, have seen their numbers swell. Self-described atheists now account for 4% of U.S. adults, up modestly from 2% in 2009. Agnostics make up 5%, up from 3% a decade ago, and 17% of Americans now describe their religion as nothing in particular, up from 12% in 2009. <laughs> Furthermore, the data shows a wide gap between older Americans, baby boomers, and members of the silent generation, that's us, and millennials and their levels of religious affiliation and attendance. More than 8 in 10 members of the silent generation, those born between 1928 and 1945, describe themselves as Christian, so 84% as do three quarters of baby boomers, 76%. But millennials are one in three, say they attend uh, religious services at least twice a month. Two thirds attend wor uh, worship services, about 64%. But there is many millennials who say they never attend religious services, 22%, as, say, as those who say they go at least once a week. That's sad. That's why... The deceiver is having a great time. Yes, right he now. is. Yes, he, he is. Controls the airwaves, and now he wants everybody to stay home, and they give you all these uh, deals on uh, cable TV mm. or over-the-air TV, and that's why some of us just need to get back to the basics, basics yep. and know that God is love in the scriptures, and God's love it just takes on so many different forms throughout the stories of scriptures. You know, like part of the Bible even refers to God as love mm -hmm. itself. And that's why we got to get back to loving one another. Now, they don't want you to touch nobody, social distancing. <laughs> you can't even, they don't even want you to touch each other in your own home, which is crazy. They tell you that you can make love, but I can't shake your hand. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh, let me get, okay. So love could be explained as wanting the best for someone yes and that's exactly what god intends for us god loves you simply because he loves you you don't have to work for his affection you don't have to set yourself straight before god because he can pour out his love over you he says it in first john 4 7 and 9 dear friends let us love one another for love comes from god Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. All right, you atheists out there. <laughs> Whoever does not love does not know God. That, that's why you can't be loving in darkness mm. because God is love. He's yeah. right. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only, only son, son. Yes. into the world that he might live through him. So God absolutely loves you. There is a God. We believe that there's a God. It's yes. hard to get your mind around it, but it's true. This is where the faith journey starts. Understanding that God loves you, that he exists. If you do not have an assurance of his love, your faith journey will not be long lasting. It's going to be cut short. By studying the word, it can help strengthen your faith. There's no force more powerful than the love of our Heavenly Father. And I'm kind of going on a tangent, but God has for us what He wants for us. His love and power can move mountains. It can stop the roaring seas. It can heal broken bones. JC gave a testimony about how she was healed mm -hmm. from that terrible car accident. And she was with pain. 
He can do, do it. it. Yes, he, can, he can. He can heal a wounded heart. He can transform your life. He can stop us from getting the virus, and he can heal those who have, have it. it. Yep. Woo! That's the God who I serve. That's why you know we got to always call on Him, and He's not an angry taskmaster who only shows affection when we succeed. He loves us always, no matter what. Because he knows we fall short. We fall short. So I just uh, I just want to say, you know, 1 Corinthians 14, 33. God is not the author of confusion. He is the author of peace. Mm. He's the author of order and of law. Yeah. So when Lucifer, Satan, the deceiver, rebelled, that JC mentioned, he took a third of them with him. He brought chaos into the world yes, he that did. we have been fighting ever since until Yeshua Jesus returns. Right. Isaiah 14, 12, 14 says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? Oh, the nations are all weak. Mm. For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high. Mm. That's a lie from the pit of hell. <laughs> <laughs> but Jesus came 4,000 years later and he entered the great contest, the contest of the temptation on the mount. Remember, he refused to obey the devil and to submit himself. He quoted scripture correctly. Mm. He obeyed God. And that really is the reason why Jesus came. Yes, he came to forgive our sons, but he came to give us the great commandment. Love God with all your, your heart, heart, your mind, and your spirit, mm. and love your neighbor as yourself. Finally, he turned to the devil and he gave Satan a command. He said, Get away from yeah. it. And you know, he probably said it a little bit more colorful than that. Yes. And the devil obeyed. Matthew 4, 4 says, it is written, written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. From that time on, the successor of Satan has been qualified to take over the rule of uh, the rule of the earth. But Jesus went to heaven for 19 years. He is soon coming again. And when he does, the devil will be displaced. But remember, mm. he did leave the Holy Spirit to guide us, to warn us, and to keep us safe. Praise him. But the devil, like I said, will be displaced. Christ will rule the earth. God's laws will be restored. Order and peace will come at last and I'm looking for yes. that day. We need you. Yes. Lord, we need you every hour. Hey, but you know what? We got to visit. You got to you got to check out our sponsor Dr. Elton Powell at Dynamic Spine and Wellness Center. Visit his website at Dynamic Spine and Wellness Center or give him a call 850-402-9061. That was a that was a lead in <laughs> to Dr. Powell. Right. You got to check him out. And um and let him know that the Stone Builders uh, sent you. And uh, I just ask that God just open up your eyes. Yes. Take the Please scales Lord. off of them. Please take the Lord. plugs out your ear. Please because Lord. we, JC and I, we believe that he's alive and right here, right now. And I just pray that a uh, hedge of protection around each and every one of you, that you just get to know him right. and develop a personal relationship right. with him. Yes, yes. And I believe, I believe it thou this, I believe. I believe. Because I know that within our lifetime, how things have so drastically changed yes. and really have started to begin to deteriorate mm. to the point that even our children are being affected greatly. Yes. So, uh, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, children, uh, family members, friends, we need to get on the same train because the whistle is about 
Sebelah. Yes. Uh, or the trumpet <laughs> yeah, is about, about to sound. sound. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, until next week, uh, we're out. God bless. All righty. Everything that comes from me, I'm taking it back. <laughs> Ain't nobody feel like me out there? Listen. Everything that comes from me, I'm taking it back. Sometimes you got to tell them just like that.